Thank you, Jesus. So your ladder will be greater than your past. And you will, you will be blessed more than you could ask. Oh, listen, despite all that has been done, the stuff nobody knows about, the stuff you can't tell nobody about, all the hell you've been through, nobody knows, not your mama, not your daddy, not your sister, not your brother. Praise the Lord, beloved. On behalf of Apostle D, we want to thank you for inviting us into your home. I know this message will be a blessing, so call a friend, a neighbor, or get a group and get ready to hear a fresh word from the Lord that I believe will be life-changing. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we here at MOGFC. Now, here is Apostle D and the message. God be the glory. Well, let me welcome our internet saints. Praise the Lord. We're online streaming to the telephone saints. God bless you. To the household of faith. Good morning. God bless you this morning. morning. Come on, I dare you to give Jesus another crazy shout. Uh, what will take the shout out of your mouth? Hallelujah. We're coming from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. The wars. Men and women of God serving God, serving the true and living God. It is an honor and a joy. Yes. Serving the true and living God is a joy and an honor. Amen. God does not want to rob us of our happiness, Amen. He doesn't. God wants to multiply your happiness Glory. into joy and peace. Yes, For the Bible declares in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, part B of that scripture, it says, For the joy of the Lord is my strength. I know, I believe, you got what it takes. But it will take everything you got. Yeah. Yes. yes, come on, Pastor. Brothers and sisters, the cross is the only message that you and I need to receive our salvation. Mm -hmm. That battered and bruised bishop of our soul died that you and I might live. Right. Yes. In other words, salvation stands alone. You don't need a water baptism. You don't need a Holy Ghost baptism. You don't need to try to get right. It stands alone. In other words, if you will confess with your mouth that you are a sinner and repent, yes. and if you will believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, Son of the living God, who died, buried, rose again, Thou shalt have eternal life. Yes, yes. It stands alone. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. On, but, everybody say but. 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 The baptism of the Holy Ghost allows you a better quality Ooh, of life come on, now. on this side of eternity. Come on now. The baptism of the Holy Ghost allows you a better quality of life on this side of eternity. Hear me today, men and women of God, beloved of the Father, excitement teases the flesh, mm. but anticipation tames the flesh. Hallelujah. Say that. Anticipation make you live right. Hallelujah. Excitement, ooh, I'm called to be a preacher, and you don't have no expectation. Excitement is for the immature. Anticipation is for the mature. Hallelujah. Children of God, we are children of promise. Not easily shaken since somebody say amen. 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 We're not easily shaken. Why? 
Because we trust God. <coughs> we trust God that if he brought us this far, will he not bring us the rest of the way? Hallelujah. He will not leave us nor fail us. Hallelujah. Don't you remember 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20? For the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, for the glory of God by us. Disciples of Christ Jesus, hear this preacher this morning. Please, yes. please hear me. Salvation stands alone. Yes. I'm trying to get right before I... No, you don't. To come into the presence of God, you must first let go and let God. To come into the presence of God, you must take your hands off of everything. To come into the presence of God, you must keep your mouth shut. God is not interested in your opinion. To come into the presence of God, you must lose you to find God. It is time to get into the deep where you can no longer touch God. The Spirit of the Lord declares, the deep waters are calling you. This is a prophetic word this yes, morning. Yes. This is a prophetic word. And if you can receive it, somebody needs to say, I'm ready to get into the deepness of God. Ready, 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 ready. Is there anybody tired of playing in the shallow waters yeah. with God? Are you ready for the deep waters of God, beloved of God? Hear me this morning. Deep waters are calling. In Ezekiel chapter 41, Ezekiel is known as the prophet of the Son of Man. Ezekiel showed us that God was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Where God is into woman and everything that goes on in our life. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1, afterwards he brought me again to the door of the house. Look at a brother or sister and say afterwards. Afterwards. I mean, I've been there before. Been there before. Yes. But something else had to happen. Do you see it? Yes. Afterwards he brought me again to the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out under the threshold. In other words, we pick up the story with afterward. Something happened prior to this. Is that right? Uh -huh. right. Come on, Apostle. I went to the house, and then afterwards I came back and the pork chops were done. Mm -hmm. Something had happened prior to. Is that right? Right. Or we're now dealing with part two of something that happened. There was a part one. Yeah. In order to have an afterwards, there got to be a part one. Come on, come so on. now we picked up with part two. What is part two? Mm. I come to tell the people of God, what is part one? Part one is salvation. Oh, salvation. Part one is salvation. The man got saved. How many know he got saved and he was in a house but never saw the water before? Something had to happen for him to see the world. He said, I've been here, but I never saw this before. Afterwards, he brought me again to the same house, and I saw something I never saw before. I said, it's good to see the move of God, but ain't it better to be a part of the move of God? I said, deep waters is calling you. Afterwards, he brought me. Part one, the salvation. Baptism of the Holy Ghost come is on, part two. Come on, come on, come on. Salvation is the beginning of your journey. It's not the end of your journey. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Salvation is the beginning of your everlasting life. It's not the end of it. I've come to preach to some folks today who sold out for Jesus, Amen. who don't mind witness to Jesus on their job, don't mind listening yeah, yeah, to Jesus yeah. on the phone. You can't even take them to Walmart, but should take 15 minutes, take an hour and a half, because they're trying to look for somebody. I've got to witness and to preach to some folks who's ready to be sold out the whole route, folks who's ready to get into the deep waters of God. Come on, I'm ready, I'm ready, willing and able. 
I'm coming to talk to some folks who's tired or who, or who just want more than just showing up to church, but ready to start showing out in church. Hallelujah. Is anybody tired of just showing up for church and want to start showing out for church? I heard it in your testimony this morning. Oh, this message is telling to you. You're ready for the deep things of God. Who's ready to experience God on a whole new level? If that's you, you need to shout, I'm ready for the deep. I'm ready for the deep. You know the world got that cliche, right? I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want to tell God I'm ready for the deep, God. Come on, God. Come on, God. Yeah. You can't come to the burning bush without taking your shoes off. Yeah. You can't come into the presence of God with your opinion. You, uh, you got to come with a humble heart, a contrite spirit. You got to come prostrate before God. You got to lose you to find God. Say it. I say, God is calling you to the deep this moment. When I read that, I said, afterwards, that means whoever he's talking to, he's never experienced this before. Something had to happen for him to see, this is a whole new level. Yes. I didn't know all this was going on in church. Have you ever been to church and saw people sleeping and saw people like, I wish the time hurry up. They ain't never experienced the river. But you need to say, I'm ready to get into the river. Get into the river. Hallelujah. My brother said, I've never experienced this before. I was in the house of God all this time and never saw. In other words, so close to God. But never got wet. Mm, that's good. So close in the house of God and never got wet. What am I talking about? Some folks are, listen, some folks come to church and just, well, they need to be grateful I'm here. Got some folks that know how to look the part and never get wet. Never really have a tangible touch from God. Never experience that another level. You go to church every week. You don't understand, that's my day of worship. I don't care what's going on, I got to go. Oh, well, when you feel like that, how many know you done got wet? You done got wet. But before this experience, how many know this man never got wet? Isn't it a sad thing to go to church and don't get what you came for? Oh my God. Go to church and never get what you came for? Oh, but the angel of the Lord took him again and said, let me show you all that's available to you. Yeah, yeah. Healing is available to you. Yes. Prophecy is available to yes. you. Oh, but you got to come in and get wet. Yes, yes. Don't just show up. He said, I never knew all this was going on. My God. His eyes were open. Yes. Look at the brother and say, I hope your eyes are open this morning. Oh, your eyes are open this morning. Look at verse 2. Well, in verse 1, you saw where the waters came out of the sanctuary? The waters came out of the sanctuary. We're trying to bring waters into the sanctuary. You know what I'm talking about, your own opinion of God. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Hallelujah. Man, I went to a swimming pool. I didn't bring my own water. The water was already there. Amen. You want to come to church with your own ideas? Hallelujah. Next time, next week, come to church and put a bathing suit on the seat next to you. What you got that for? I plan on getting wet today. Yeah. I come with expectation. I didn't come for excitement. I came for expectation. I came expecting God to show up. I need God. Listen, you may not need God to do something right about now, but I need God to touch a child right now. I need God to restore a family. Now. I need to get wet this morning. I said deep waters are calling you. My God. Yes, thank you. Mm. Afterwards, yes. mean he was there already. <laughs> you know some folks been in church all their night, life, and never got wet. You know who I'm talking to. I've been in church all night, but something different happened this time. Oh, somebody better help me preach this time. Why you think you still stuck? Oh, because something done happened to me. I'm like, I like getting wet. Come into the river where the water is cool. Come on, come on. 
You remember John when the woman said that Jesus told the woman, the water that I want to give you, <laughs> you'll never thirst again. Yeah, Who did you come for a word? Yes, this hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 2. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me. <coughs> led me. <coughs> what am I telling you this morning? You want to get wet? Start letting God lead you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of you already came with a fixed amount of money you want to give. You're not being led. Amen. Some of you already know what you plan on doing after church. Well, I'm going to go eat at this restaurant. No, maybe we need to go pray for some people. Amen. I say, look, look, look at the story. I'm in the church and he led me out of the church. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, this water baptism, I mean this Holy Ghost baptism, come on, come on, it ain't just on. for the church. Come on. Uh, he led me. We need to start letting God lead us. Amen. And showing us all that is available to us. All that belong to the household of faith. This is what belongs to the household of faith. Let me read it again. Then brought him me out of the way of the gate northward and led me ab about the way without unto the outer gate. I mean, he done took me out of the church. By the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. Somebody tell me where Jesus sit. Right. Mm -hmm. May I tell you, whenever you see right side, they're talking about the king of glory. Come on, come on. Oh, Jesus said in the gospel of John, it is expedient that I go, that when I go, my father shall send you another comforter, and he will flow from the right side. Hallelujah. Yes. He will not speak of himself, but of me. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This fits like a glove, yes. don't it? I say this is a prophetic word this Amen. morning. Amen. Come on, Apostle. See, led me, when I read that, I said, hold on a minute. That reminds me of Luke chapter 4. After Jesus was baptized, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Led him. Yeah. How many of us are really letting the Holy Ghost lead us? When you get out of work, you think your day done with, don't you? You're not letting the Holy Ghost. Somebody need to say, I need to get wet all over again. Get wet all over again. Hallelujah. Yeah. enough, some folks ain't even getting wet. <laughs> There's all levels in the church. Some people come dry <laughs> and leave dry. Some people come a little wet and leave a little wet. My God. I said, you got to get to the deep waters where you can't touch the bottom no more. It's the truth anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Apostle. God is not trying to rob you of your happiness. He's trying to multiply your happiness Amen. and turn it into joy unspeakable. Amen. For the joy of the Lord is my, my strength. strength. Happiness has to deal with material things. Yeah. Joy has to do with the inner, inner on, contentment. On, yet though he slay me, yet shall I praise him. Do you understand the whole world can be going to hell in a handbasket and I'm the only one going the opposite way? Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm like, why you let him out? He's enjoying the water in the church. He said, that's the problem. I'm baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. They in the church, and they never want to take it where it's really needed. Amen, amen. Do you see it, beloved? Hallelujah. Ooh, this is some good stuff. Yes. Verse 3. And when, when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. Mm. Now, first of all, does anybody know how long a cubic is? A cubic is a little longer than a foot. It's 18 inches. Mm. So if you time 18 inches by a thousand, and then you divide that by 12 inches equal a foot, you'll see that he took me 1,500 feet. And then the waters were to the ankles. Mm. Everybody say to the ankles. To the ankles. Some in the house are just getting wet enough to say I'm in, but I'm still in control. To the ankles. I'm in the house of God, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but I'm still in control. I'll say if I'm a praise or not. I'll say if I'll get up and clap. Oh, I'm getting a little wet. Yeah. But I'm still in control. Yeah. I can come or go. I'm still in control. That's good apostle. I mean, you know, 1,500 feet means another level. Yes. When I first got in, I wasn't even 1,500 feet into the church. I was at the front, hallelujah. But it took me a 1,500 feet. And then I experienced getting wet. Woo, it felt good. Some of us think that's all we need, is that right? Come on. You need to just be happy I showed up. You just need to be happy I put a smile on my, you ought to be grateful. Did you see how pretty the day looked today? I could be somewhere else. Some of y'all are wet just enough to think this message is for somebody else and not you. Come on now. Wet just enough. You know folks that are still in control. Don't sit in my seat. You can get in church and leave out and start arguing and cursing in the parking lot. I'm telling you today, that's just ankle wet. Ankle wet. Everybody's getting wet in the church, but ain't nobody giving God control in the church. Mm -hmm. That's good, Apostle. Oh, everybody getting wet? Yeah. Some people not getting wet, but the people that are getting wet, they still in control. Yeah. There's only one level where you lose control. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, you saw that with Mary's alabaster box. Mm -hmm. I say whatever you open, you can close. But whatever you break, you can no longer. Somebody need to say, break me, Lord. Break, break me, Lord. Lord. I'm tired of being in control. Tired of being in control. I say the first thing to get in God's presence, you got to let go and let God. And so we see that even though the ankles are wet at 1,500 feet, I can get in or out. I'm in control. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You better not cross me on a bad day. I'll tell you, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 4. And he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to my knees. Ooh, I'm getting a little deeper into the Lord. <laughs> I'm getting a little, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, sister? How come I got many friends and we ain't all at the same level? Some people just want to get wet at the ankle. And some people get wet at the knees. Yeah. What is the knees? Come on, make some in the house, just a little bit more wet or a little involved, but they're still in control. Mm -hmm. That's the knee syndrome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the people get, oh man, I wish I could get as deep as them. And you don't know, they're like, this is all I'm going to do. I ain't going to do no more. Uh, lucky I volunteer for this. This is all I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The problem is, some in the house, when you get to the next level, incidentally, it was another thousand, which means how much? 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. There are levels in God before you can get. Uh, hallelujah. Because you can get so high and say, well, this is enough. Yeah. Because you know I got another life. Right. You know, I got other stuff to do. I got a job. I got a family. Just get me up to. And he took me another thousand and it was up to my chest. I see it's up to your chest, sister, a brother, but can you still touch the bottom? That means you're still in control. I, there's no fear involved. Don't you understand? Uh, you got to understand, if you ever been into the Mississippi River, if you ever been into the ocean, if you ever been to the Gulf and went out where you can't touch the bottom, there is all of a sudden like, oh my God. Yes, amen. Go swim in the Pacific Ocean. And you know, if the tide hits you right, you can end up in Hawaii. All right. All right. There's a fear that come over you. I'm no longer in control. I can't run to the beach anymore. Oh, uh, is somebody listening to me this yes, morning? Yes. I say the deep waters are calling. Yes. yes. Don't play with church. If you're going to get in church, get in church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Apostle. I'm just getting a little wet. The ankles was wet. The knees was wet. The chest was wet. Everybody wet, but they're still in control. My God. Mm -hmm. It's a sad day, man of God, woman of God. 
When you come to church and you don't even know how to pull down the presence of God. You can't even come up to this altar and cry. Oh, you know how to give a stage testimony. You know how to make it. But you never experience a full overflowing experience of God. Hallelujah. This water I'm talking about. He purifies. The baptism of the Holy Ghost lets you see stuff. Come on, Pastor. Let you get into the heavenlies that are nobody's business. How many want to get into the deep waters this morning? You ought to shout, I want to get into the deep. I want to get into the deep. I know you're right. Lord. Hallelujah. I'm tired of just showing up. I'm ready to show out for God. Amen. Hallelujah. The problem is when you got ankle wet people and knee wet people, they look at people chest wet and think, I wish I was like them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And never see beyond that. Right. There's greater in God. Yes. I say there's 30, 60, and 100 fold. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. If you allow yourself just to get a little wet and that's it this morning, Amen. this is all I need. I already know I'm going to go to church and after that we're going to go eat. Then after that I'm going to go to bed and get ready for work. And is this what your life consists yeah, of? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Not trying to bless nobody, not trying to pray for nobody. Mm. Hallelujah. Get into the river. Yes. Get into the river Amen. and let the river flow. Amen. How many know I don't care if the water's chest deep, you're still in control? Amen. How many know each one represents a different level? Ankle, knee, yes. it represents different levels yes. in the house. And so he asked the man of God, see, people got saved and they thought that was it. But I want to show you there's another level in God. Look at all this pure water available to you. Look at all what's available to you. And you just come into church dry and leave dry. Not knowing other people are crying before living God. Oh, oh. And not knowing other people get a tangible touch from God. Because when they come to church, they don't come for excitement. They come with expectation. I ain't leaving here till God changed me. Yeah. I ain't leaving here till I get something out of yeah. it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've heard people say, man of God, you preach good. That's a good word. And ain't nobody buying the extra CD. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got seven dollars to go buy a bird. Amen. You'd rather feed your flesh instead of feed somebody else's spirit. Amen. Then you get blessed by this word. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ankle wet people can only let other people get ankle wet. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're the ones that tell you, you ain't got to go that far. Yeah. You ever heard somebody say, don't take all that? Yeah. They ain't got to uh, ankle, ankle. Ankle. Hallelujah. You get them up to the knees and, and hold on. Now, you might, you might look like you lose your balance. So if you don't want to lose your balance in God, just get back to the ankle. Yeah. And, and you can steady yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, I think I can balance myself in God. I can do this in that and still be called a Christian. You understand? I, yeah, ooh, ooh, it almost it took me, but, but I, I, I stood my ground. Make it plain, Apostle. Hallelujah. <laughs> the knee wetness of people that get in prayer line every week. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. When you gonna get in on the river and let the water yeah. just consume it? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Is this message blessing me? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. <laughs> then he measured another thousand and brought me through the waters, and they were up to my chest. Yeah. Chest. How many know that deals with pride? Come on, Father. Okay. You need to know I'm serving God. Because baby, you know when I talk to my children, they know where I stay. When I talk to my spouse, he better know I know how to. Don't touch me. I'm the anointed of God. Come on now. But you're still in control, aren't you? Yeah. You'll pray for your children, but nobody else. You'll be friends with a brother, a sister, a child longer than you'll be with the children of God. Yes. In control. 
And I, I'm wondering the people that's ankle wet and knee wet, looking at the people that's church wet. They're seeing the move of God. They're like, ooh, that brother know he loved God. Ooh, and not knowing they should say, but I'm still in control. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The chess people. Mm, my God. They're the ones that's doing stuff and then saying, I should be the right hand. I should be getting praise. I should be getting a certificate right about now. Look what I'm doing. I'm cleaning the bathroom. I'm driving the bus. I'm doing, Chad, look at, yes. 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 I say we all wet, but we all at different levels, aren't we? Yes. Ouch, you ain't got to say it like that. Yes, yes. we do. Yeah, we do. I say deep is calling you this yes. morning. Yes, yes. The deep waters are calling. Yes. Glorious. Listen to me, please. You will never experience the beauty of a horizon standing on a shoreline. That's right, Apostle. Ooh, my, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you can't experience that unless you've been to California. Mm -hmm. La Jolla and La Costa brags that they have the best sunsets in America. Mm -hmm. Where does the sun set? In the West. In the West. Guess where California is? There is a place called La Costa where each house costs you between five or ten million dollars. Mm. That's where Bob Hope had his golf classes and this and that. And I was blessed to be invited to one of those uh -huh. years ago. Uh -huh. Trying to climb the corporate ladder and my God, they have these little um, uh, gazebos out on the ocean. Mm -hmm. And everybody pile up when the sun about to set. There is no gorgeous sight than that. Wow. They wrote a song, have you ever seen the sun mellow and red mm -hmm. when it's about to set? It is, that's when you know there must be a God. God. Yes. There got to yes. be a God. Can't no man paint a picture that beautiful. The colors are crystal clear. Yes. I said, is there anybody ready to get into yes. the deepness of God? Amen. Yes, I know you come to church. All right, that's just the beginning of it. On, Why don't you teach the children something? Hallelujah. Why don't you bring somebody? Why don't you help out somewhere? The, yes, you go to church, but there's another level. Yes, yes. This man didn't know it. He had to go again. After was part two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought salvation was it. All I need to do is get saved. Yeah. Yes, salvation stays alone. But if you want a better quality of life, get into the river. Yes, I yes. said, get into the river. Come on, look at our brother and sister and say, I'm getting into the river. I'm getting into, into the river. Hallelujah. Now, look at verse 5. Afterwards, he measured another thousand. Fifteen, fifteen. 15, 15, and then up. Oh. <coughs> Five, four minutes. You want the, however deep, high you want to go in God is how deep you got to go in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're getting this Amen. this morning. Amen. Verse 5, and afterwards he measured a thousand, it was a river. Yeah. That I could not pass over, for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. Mm. I'm no longer in control. Right. Mm -hmm. Wherever the river takes me is where I got to go. Yeah. If the river tells me I got to go here, I got to go there. No. If the river say forgive this person, I got to forgive this right. person. If the river say tiptoe, I got to tiptoe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you can no longer touch the bottom. Right, right. When you can't touch the bottom, you lose your safety net. Mm -hmm. You lose your bankroll. Well, I know because uh, I got money in the bank. I got this. Some of us are still afraid to pay tithe. Amen. When are you going to get into the deep waters yes, of God? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Some of us are still afraid to bless people. Amen. But always looking for people to bless you. Come on now. But when you get into the river, God, I don't care how many people I bless. Uh -huh. This ain't about them. This is about you. Right. Now, when you get into the river and it overtakes you, how many know now you must totally depend on where the river takes you? Which means you must now totally depend on where God leads you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Some men don't even want to cry in church. Mm -hmm. 
I need an arm. Some men don't want to come and stand before this altar and say, my God, I need to change. I'm not a good husband. I'm not a good father. God, if you don't break me, if you don't get me to this river, I'm going to drown in dry land. Yeah. That's good. That's how you yeah. drown in dry land? Because you never got into the water. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. For your redemption draws nigh. Yes. Hallelujah. I told you some of you are just wet enough to believe this message ain't even for you. Come on, come on. Yeah, they need this one. Come on. <laughs> that's the one there. That's the ankle one right there. No, you're the ankle one. Amen. <laughs> oh, it's for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Just yes. for me. Yes. You won't tell God when you've had enough. Right they won't turn around and say, use me, Lord. God said, I need you into the deep. Then. <laughs> oh, nobody but me say, Lord, I want to be used? No, you're not the only one. Anybody want to be used by yeah. God, you got to get into the deep waters of God. Yeah. Did you hear this man never experienced that before? Yeah. He said, I've been in church all this time. I didn't know the waters were that deep. <laughs> I didn't know if you get into God this deep, things like this will happen. People buy your meal. People buy your tithes. People bless you with Ain't you tired of getting blessed? No. no. Every week you got a blessed testimony. Amen. Get into the river. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that Sabbath school? Yes. Yes. Leave the four corners. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Sister, did that work for you? Yes. Immediately after you started blessing me, what happened? It started overflowing, didn't it? I couldn't even pray to some man I didn't know say, let me buy you a meal. Then next week, oh, we're going to put ties on. What happened? You know what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went to another level, didn't you? Yeah, yes. I want to, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Sister started putting on the envelope, Apostle's gift. Is that right? Amen. Before you weren't doing that? All of a sudden, she started doing it, and this is what's happening? Amen. You need to look at somebody and say, I got in the real. But got that's what happened. Got the way Got the way we hear that all the time. There must be a balance in God. I really understand that. But you can't be so in adverse to blessing the servant of God that you miss your blessing. Come on, come Amen. On. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't going to never let anybody out bless me. That's just me. Lord. From a meal chicken to a thigh, it don't matter. I'm thinking about blessing a child right now to go to summer camp baseball. Amen. I'm praying on God right now. 18, 13, 14, I forgot how much. God, can I bless them? God, give me the green light. Watch what happens. Ma'am, the money's in the mail. Amen. Hallelujah. I need that money. But more importantly, I need God to lead me. Come on, come on. <laughs> I ain't going to never let money lead me. I'm never going to let a woman lead me. I'm never going to let food lead me. If anything going to lead me, I'm going to get in the river and say, wherever the river want to take me. Don't you see that's a picture of Moses? They were trying to kill Moses. And they put him in a little ark and set him in the river. Did Moses have roars? No. Did he have a motor? No. Moses had to go wherever the river took him. Yeah. And he had to trust that God was not going to let the alligators bite him. The crocodiles, the crocodiles get drunk. He had to trust God that the water moccasin. Yeah. And wherever the river took him, that's where Moses went. Yeah. And he ended up. Yeah. 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 Somebody need to say, I'm ready to get into the deep. Ready to get into the deep. Hallelujah. Because he allowed the river to take him, didn't he get blessed? Yes. Grew up in Pharaoh's house, but he came yes. to himself and said, I believe I can get a little deeper in God. Come on, man. This ain't deep enough for me. All right. 
And the angel said, well, come on to the wilderness. Yeah. Is that where Jesus had to go into the wilderness to get deep in God? Oh, Jesus was already deep in God. He was 12 years old teaching people. But Jesus still had to get deep. Yeah. Yeah. Moses said, take me to the wilderness. Amen. There is where I learn. What did Moses learn in the wilderness, beloved? 40 years, nobody's there. Can you hear him talking to the, the gecko in the scorpion? They're not listening to him, are they? Right. Why can't anybody hear me? I'm thirsty. Oh, God, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have left Egypt if you could only. Nobody's answering back. All right. Uh, squee, squee. All you hear is the wild animal. Yeah, yeah. They're not talking to him. Yeah. 40 years God trained Moses of silence. Is that right? Amen. 40 years he learned and taught Moses. There ain't nobody talking back to you. Ain't nobody listening to you, Moses. I got to bring you to a place where it's just me and you, Moses. Mm -hmm. So he stands before Pharaoh and he says, Pharaoh, yeah. let my people go. Yeah. Yes. They silence. Moses said, you don't impress me, Pharaoh. I had 40 years of being silent. <laughs> I got 40 years of training of people not listening to me. I done been to the deep water. And the only reason I'm here now is because the water led me here. Yeah. Is this word blessing anybody? I said, the deep waters are calling you this morning. Thank you, Father. Can't you see it? Yes. He was in church and never experienced the war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why when you're trying to witness to people, they ain't go deep and say, I don't go to church on Saturday. I go to church every day if need be. God got a word somewhere, somehow. God trying to get a blessing to me. But I'm going to tell him when he's going to give it to me. God, I want you to give me this word on this day between this hour and who do you think you are? How many know that's chest high, people? Yeah. But I told you, pride. Yeah. You're going to tell God when to speak to you. Yeah. You're going to tell God how you're going to work this thing out. You better get into the river yeah. where it's so deep. It's rivers I got to swim in now. Yeah, yeah. Rivers, water so deep that all I see is opportunity. Yes. You get into deep water, all you see is opportunity. I wonder if that's a boat coming. I wonder if that's floating in the water. Oh, I'm looking for opportunity anywhere it comes. Hallelujah. But as long as you're not in the deep water, you don't need opportunity, don't you? You can just step right back out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hallelujah. Some of you don't need nobody to bless you because you think you got money in the bank. Some of you think y'all don't need nobody to do nothing because I can do it myself. My God, God's trying to get an opportunity to you. Yes. Ooh, this is good anyway. Come on, come on. I say this is a prophetic word this morning. Amen. The deep is calling you to go to another level. Thank you, Father. Another level to where I see it on Saturday. A few folks act like there's thousand people here. Amen. The way y'all praise. Come on. Amen. Can't even get enough folks to come to Sabbath school. Dynamite teaching. Amen. Whether they can't get up, whatever the reason. Lord. God allows me to prepare a message. Yes. You remember when we wasn't having Sabbath school? Right. All of a sudden, I said, God, you want me to take them deeper? He said, yeah. That means I got to get two messages yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. And you don't even respect enough to come for the message? Right. Wow. And yet God talking to you? My God. I'll quit serving God right now. I'll be your worst nightmare. I got to fast 21 days without eating, 14 days without eating. I got to go 12 days for me to hear from God. And you don't even know how to fast one whole day? Come on now, Pop. Because you're afraid of your medicine? God, we're going to die today. Yeah. Either you're going to let me fast the whole day or we're going to die today. I don't need to live being afraid that if I don't take this medicine, I'm going to die. I'd rather be dead in you than to be alive in fear. Man, come on, I'm talking about the deep waters right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I know some of you don't think this message for you. You're looking at some. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> some of you 
come in here with stuff on your mind and you can go through the motion like praising, but you know what's really on your mind. Yeah. I got to go to work after church and then I got to go pick. And, and you're not even, you can't even give God your whole heart to get into worship. Get into the river. Yes. Man of God, don't preach that strong. Come on, come on with it. I'm trying to show you if I don't preach this strong, you'll stay this week. Amen. That's good. Good. Preach. Preach. You'll stay this week thinking God is speaking to you. Listen, yes, I ain't going to wait. You can enjoy some of the blessings. I'm trying to tell you today, God's trying to move you out the puddle of blessings and move you into the oceans of blessings. Yes. All this is available to you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Woo. Woo, when I saw that, I said, oh, the waters done took over on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ever get in deep water and you swallow some? Oh. Do you understand? Do you, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? The water done took over. He's no longer in control. Mm -hmm. And look at verse 6. And he said unto me, son of man. Has thou seen this? Son of man represents a prophet. He's telling the prophet, how can you give what you never experienced? How can you give what you never experienced, sister? You heard me tell this lady, what's going to keep young people? They got to see power. They got to see power. Yeah. You can't just preach a sermon to young people and think that's it. That might have been good for you or your mama generation. Oh, but we got a whole new generation now. Hallelujah. Right. They want to hear about the miraculous. Eighth was healed. Blind eyes was open. Oh, yes, yes, we got a lot of kids that want to go for the entertainment mm -hmm. and don't not oppress into the endurance. I understand that. Oh, but if we ever let them taste the water, Hallelujah. Yes. We ever let him taste the water. He said, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river and to the bank of the river. Do you know why? Because he told Ezekiel, that ain't for now, but that's coming. Mm. It's coming with a man named Jesus. Wow. But I've let you experience and to see Mike, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews, all them that died before Jesus died in faith, looking toward the promise. We now can look behind and see the promise. But you don't even want to get into the river, which he seemed to wish he could have just dove right in. Come on, come on. But the angels say, not yet. Right. The Son of Man is not born yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He brought me to the brink of the river. I went right to the edge of it. And he says, this is a shadow of what's about to come. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't remember Abraham, our dad, when he said, I saw Jesus' day and rejoiced in it. Yeah. And they said, how you saw his day? You're not even 50 years old yet. Don't you remember that? And, and Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. They wanted to kill him because he used the name of God, yeah, I, am. I Am. When did Abraham see his day? When he offered up his son Isaac. Yeah, say that. He said, oh my God, this is the plan of salvation. That you asking me to hand up my only son, are you saying you're going to send your only son and you're going to use him as a sacrifice? Amen. And when he realized what it was, he saw a ram and a bush. Yeah. Woo! How many know Abraham got into the war? Amen. Yes. And let it consume him. He was ready to kill his own son. Yes. You know what he was telling his son? You ain't even important as much as this river. Now watch this. I know we're getting late. But this is good anyway. Yeah. This is a vision of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Verse 7. Now when I had returned, behold, the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other side. How many know the Bible calls us trees of Amen. righteousness? Amen. What did he say? When I came back, I saw a tree. Don't you know the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for every person on the planet? Amen. It's available to you and to me from the young and the old, from the Jew and the Gentile, from the Catholic to the Protestant. I saw trees on every side saying, Amen. Woo! 
You got some people saying the Holy Ghost baptism not for the day. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Verse 8. If you're in the house of God, if you're born again, this baptism of the Holy Ghost is available to you. Amen. To the internet audience. God wants to bring you deeper. There's something stored up in your spirit right now. And I just want to minister to you and tell you today. He died that you can live. Get into this room. Amen. If Jesus offered it to the woman at the well, why won't he offer it to you? Amen. Glory. Verse 8. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert. Did you hear that? Somebody need to shout praise the Lord there. Praise the Lord. Lord. These waters ushers out from the church and go back to the desert. When are you ready to go to the projects with all this power inside of you? Amen. When are you ready to go to the drug addict and say, how can we bless you? These waters usher out to the desert and they go into the sea, which bring it forth unto the sea. And the waters shall be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What water should be healed? Don't you remember the woman at the well? She said, we drink from this well. She said, uh, -uh that well is going to make you thirsty. Uh -huh. But the water I give you should be a healing water. Right. What's inside of you, woman of God? You have all the power you need. That's why the enemy trying to attack you. That's why the enemy trying to attack you. You're going to have to make up in your mind today. Forget about your age. Forget about your gender. Forget about your statue in life and say, I got to press in. Got to. This thing is too serious. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't wait for the opportunity. You create the opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whatsoever the river shall come, shall live. There shall be a very great multitude of fish. How many know what he told Peter? I shall make you fish of men. Of men. The water. The water that's inside of you, you should be able to touch every man, woman, child, and boy. You got rivers of living water flowing out of you. Yes. Your children can't stand up under your anointing. Yes. Your spouse can't stand up under your anointing. That ailment that's trying to mess with your body got to go. Got to. Amen. Amen. He gives me living waters. Wherever the waters shall come, the great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come there, for they shall be healed. Everything shall live whithersoever the river cometh. Amen. And you're going to say, well, I, I don't want to witness to them. You just ankle deep. Amen. Wherever the river go, you mean people going to live? They're going to come out of darkness and come into light? Amen. Wherever they go. Lord, Lord. And I'm choosing, I'm picking and choosing. Hallelujah. Everything where the water comes. Come with me to John chapter 14. Let me read it to you. Let me show it to Amen. you. That this is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. John chapter 14. Look at verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. How many know you ain't got to be scared anymore? Right, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm scared to sing in front of people. God, you're going to give me a song to sing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Wherever soever the river touches, they shall live. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go with your anointing in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, how many know that gives you a better quality of life? Amen. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 16. Look at verse 13. Be when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I mean, no, God mean lead. Yeah, yeah. What did we just read? He led me. Where will you let the Holy Ghost lead you? And he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but so ever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. 
Isn't that what just happened to Ezekiel? He said, have you ever seen this? Mm -mm. It ain't time to come, but it will come. Mm -hmm. Now look at John chapter 17. We're going to start at verse 20. This is Jesus praying. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many believe on Ezekiel's word? That you can get into the river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to believe on the word of God. Verse 21. Hallelujah. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also will be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you got this river inside of you and you don't want nobody to believe that the world, that God sent you? Mm -hmm. Hear me today. Is this not a picture of the Great Commission? Look at verse 10. We're back in Ezekiel. Are you there, beloved? Amen. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass that the fishes shall stand upon it from Engida even unto in, in Galam. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. They shall be a place. How many know that's the Great Commission? The fishes represent people. He's telling the fishes, go out and be a net to catch these people. Right. No, but we don't even have a spirit of evangelism, do we? Because I'm so stuck on my job. I'm so stuck on my children. I can't even function right. Amen. Hallelujah. If you sick, this is the place you need to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Had a lady tell me about all her issues and refused to come to church. Mm -hmm. I can't help you. <laughs> I cannot help you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. This is the Great Commission. That after you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, now you have power. Mm -hmm. You remember Acts. He said, after you receive power, go out. Mm -hmm. He saw the water, then he says, now the water's for the healing. You have no power within yourself. I say salvation is part one. You don't need to do anything to attain it. All you need to do is confess and receive. Mm -hmm. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost gives you a whole different level of quality of life. Hallelujah. Look at verse 11. I know I'm getting ready to close. Huh. Are y'all getting blessed by this word? Yes. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. Did you hear that? Yes. The, the miry places mean the swamps. Mm. The swamps is a mixture of water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people that come in with a mixture of beliefs, don't want change, this is how it is, you'll never experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Did you not read that? It is not for them. Mm -hmm. And even the marshes. You got to be from Louisiana or Florida to understand about the marsh land. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? What does the marshes mean? It never make it to the deep waters. You want this baptism, but you never want to go into the deep? This ain't for you either, then. All right. Don't you remember Simon the Sorcerer? Give me this baptism. This ain't for you, Simon. Your heart is wicked. Come on. Hallelujah. You want to pick and choose who you're going to pray for, who you're going to do this. It's not for you. I'm trying to tell you today, push past your children. Push past your spouse. Push past your job. Is anybody ready to get into the deep this morning? Amen. Amen. Hear me today, please. The marshes represent people that wanted to come to church but didn't know how to change it to the church. Mm -hmm. We're a small church and I know we operate sometimes as a Lord's church. Where folks come here and think, because you've been in a Lord's church, you can come here and do what you did in the Lord's church. No, we're not going to pick up your plate after you. We don't have people on staff like that. We got people eat candy and throw paper on the floor. Is that right, brother? Yes. Like somebody gonna get it like we a mega church. That's the marshes. You, I don't like a big church, but you come into a small church with a big church mentality. Give me, give me, give me. You take that. You, you 
got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Let the river flow in you. I want to close this moment. Look at verse 12. Amen. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on, the, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat. Say it with me. All trees. All, all trees. trees. That means you have a purpose, and you have a purpose, and you have a purpose. It ain't just a pastor. It ain't just a preacher. You have a ministry of reconciliation. Will you get up and be used by God this moment? Aren't you getting baptized in the whole? Aren't you baptized? Don't you say you have the anointing? Don't you say you have all this power? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then all the trees is for what? Meat. Whoso leaves shall not fade. Did you hear that, man yes, of God? Yes. You will never fade. You will never fade. Once you get that baptism, what does that mean, preacher? It means the gift of God or without repentance. They Listen to me. You can fall yesterday and get back up today. You can miss God yesterday and then today. Get up and go pray for somebody. Amen. Deep waters are calling you this morning. Ooh, I'm preaching better than you all. Shouting this morning. I need my sister in here. There she go. <laughs> Whose leaps you'll never fade. Never. That's why when you're on your job, doesn't God make a way for you to still witness and pray for people? Because your leaf can't fade. I don't care if you go to Walmart, Kmart, or any type of mart. Your leaf will not fail. You look for somebody and God will make a way Amen. for the waters to start flowing out of you. Amen. And the fruit thereof be consumed it shall bring forth new fruit didn't Jesus say that I've called you to bring fruit yes. beloved I'm trying to tell you get out and be an evangelist I'm trying to tell you get out and pray for a neighbor go purposely and knock on a neighbor's door you ain't got to get it organized go to a neighbor door knock and say you know what I just wanted to see if I can pray for somebody in your family Hallelujah. When you're feeling gay and somebody next to you says, excuse me, can I pray for you? Yes. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. And it shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because their waters were issued out of the sanctuary. Amen, amen. Man didn't ordain me. Man didn't build me up, and man can't tear me down. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Man didn't give it to me, and man can't take it away. It came out of the sanctuary. Oh, I wasn't afraid to get before this altar. Who am I talking to this morning that's not afraid to come before this altar this morning and say, God, I want to be broken. Break me today. Let me get into the river. You know I'm not right. You know I got stuff in my heart. Please don't let me leave here. I need the pastor to pray for me. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost that the waters can flow out. Amen. Isn't that what he said, the latter part of it? And the fruit thereof should be for me, and the leaves thereof for medicine. There's healing. Yes. Ooh, there's deliverance. Yes. And closing, beloved. God, this magnificent, majestic God, and all his magnificent and all of his majestic glory wanted us to see salvation and the baptism as two separate events. Hallelujah. That you may know today you ain't got to work for your salvation. Hallelujah. All you got to do is confess. But if you want to go deeper in God, you got to get baptized. But you got to get saved first. Uh, you can't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and not saved. Saved means repent. I turn away. I know some people saved and have a poor quality of life. Am I the only one that know people like that? Lord, go to church in and out, in and out, and still living a defeated life. Because they have not stepped into the river and got wet. Is there anybody ready to get wet this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Have a poor quality of life because they're just waiting on heaven. 
I'm just waiting to get to heaven. How about having a blessed life on this side? Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Father. But if the deep is calling to you this morning, beloved, and you need to come to this altar and say, God, break me. Let me get into the deep this morning. I'm offering an altar call. I normally don't, but this is an altar call between you and your God. I, if that's you, come to, come to this altar this morning. Come to this altar this morning. Listen, we, we're going to take the limits off of God. I, listen, I don't need to lay hands on you. Let God lay hands on you. It's the Holy Ghost that will teach you all things. Come to this altar this morning. Cry out to your God. Cry out for this living water. Cry out that this water take over. You know some of us got knee problem, back problem, hip problem, hurting your problem, women problem. Cry out! Cry out! Cry out and say, I want to get deep in God. God want to take you to another level this morning. Will you let him take you to another level this morning? To the internet viewers, I want to pray this prayer with you this morning. Come on, where you at right now? Stretch your hands to the television. Stretch your hands to the camera. And say, Lord Jesus, I repent. I'm tired of being in control. I take my hands off of it. I take my shoes off. For the place I stand is holy ground. I shut my mouth. I close my opinion. Lead me to the rock. Lord Jesus, baptize me in this Holy Ghost that I may get totally wet, that I may completely surrender. Holy Ghost, please change my heart today. Change my life today. Let me cry before you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I receive you now. As my Lord and Savior, I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Fill me and let me walk with a humility of heart and with power in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, if you say that prayer and believe it, say amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, sister, I think. Just leave it running. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. You don't have to look. If you don't think God's done with you, stay here. If God's finished with you, you can go back to your seat. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for tuning in. We know that the message blessed you as well as stirred up your soul. MOGFC, where we are growing families, not just a church. If you need a healing or prophetic word, or if you know someone that needs prayer, we want to invite you to join us in our time of worship. Our service times are Sabbath school every Saturday morning starting at 9.15 a.m. Sabbath worship is every Saturday morning starting at 10.30 a.m. Our weekly Bible study is every Monday evening starting at 7 p.m. Our weekly prayer service is every Friday evening starting at 7.30 p.m. Our location, 4741 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. Our mailing address, P.O. Box 218-242, Houston, Texas, 77218. Or watch us live at www.new.livestream.com slash M-O-G-L-C or www.youtube.com slash M-O-G-F-C. Our web address, www.mogfc.org. Our email address, pastor at mogfc.org. We, we would love to see you soon. On behalf of Apostle D and the M-O-G-F-C family, be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing.